Welcome to Aquarius, which tonight features P.J. Proby, P.P. Arnold and Lance Legault, three fine American singers from the world of pop and rock. We also meet Michael Elliott, co-founder of the 69 Theatre Company in Manchester, one of the most highly admired directors in the English theatre. We have music from two groups called Gas and Bugles, etc. We have a voodoo dance, and you'll be hearing large chunks of Shakespeare's Othello. Now, that's not five different items. We only have one subject tonight, and our subject is a new musical in which all these wildly conflicting elements are combined. It's called Catch My Soul, and its subtitle is The Rock Othello. Like West Side Story, it brings Shakespeare into the 20th century, setting the text to the powerful beat of a rock group and transposing the action to a deep south location where soul music seems the natural idiom. Catch My Soul is the dream child of Jack Good, whose twin obsessions in life apparently have been rock music and acting Othello. A crazy idea perhaps to combine the two, but Jack has the experience of both worlds to make it happen, first in Los Angeles a couple of years ago and now in England. Jack persuaded pop stars like P.J. Proby to take the plunge into the straight theatre, and he persuaded straight theatre men like Michael Elliott to try something entirely different. He adapted the play himself. He added the idea of a voodoo chorus, which is the wildest thing since the hippie tribe in that musical hair, and he got two young composers, Roy Pullman and Emil Dean Zogby, to do the blues and rock numbers. Now, rock music and Shakespeare are perhaps not such wildly contradictory elements anyway. There is a, a relation, a parallel, between the powerful gutsiness of rock music and the tortured soul of Othello, that heroic Negro general roaring like a wounded bull as he's destroyed by the fatal germ of jealousy. Anyway, Jack Good's enthusiasm persuaded us that his Catch My Soul was an adventure worth watching, and we went up to Manchester with our film cameras to spend some time at the rehearsals. Later, we went back to film pretty substantial excerpts from the performance, so you could also get the feel of the work, more or less as the audiences experience it in the theater. Rock Othello, set in the deep south of America, on a stage like Shakespeare's Globe Theater, daubed with the primary colors of the Mexican Indians, conceived, adapted, and performed by Jack Good. Well, I'd always been mad about Othello. Uh, it was the first play I by Shakespeare that I saw, and I saw it when I was nine years old at the intimate theatre Palmer's Green. Roll and stretch. And roll Every morning before rehearsals began, the whole cast had to limber up, there, preparing itself for the rigours of this arduous production. Take your head back and forth. The 69 Theatre Very Company has recruited a bizarre show. mixture of talents. Back Iago is played by Lance Legault, unknown yet in England, but with a big reputation in the United States. I do films, television, nightclubs, records, songwriting, publishing, do a lot of women, drive a lot of cars, drink a little whiskey and smoke too many cigarettes. Jump! Higher! 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 And Harad Rees plays Othello's wife, Desdemona. Shake it up, shake it up. Shake Bianca up. is played by P.P. Arnold from Tamla Motown. Yeah, 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 yeah. And P.J. Proby, heartthrob of the rocking 60s. Proby is flexing his muscles for his part as Cassio, Othello's lieutenant, and his very first role as an actor. I'm getting a lot of uh, personal hang-ups thrown out the window and a lot of uh, good things come in. You know, when you're, when you're working close to people, it's, it's much different than singing on a stage, one man on a stage with nobody else, just to an audience where you half the time can't even see them because of the bright lights and it's just a black screen. You have to, I'm getting to know people. I used to be a loner. You know. <laughs> You rascal. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Oh, I don't believe it's not on television again. <laughs> An unscripted rehearsal incident. Proby split his pants. An accident, definitely not for the show. <laughs> The 69 Company has two directors working on Catch My Soul, Brea Murray and Michael Elliott. Both are excited about the new dimension brought to Shakespeare by the singing of the American stars in the cast. 
and surprising though it may seem to some, they have no reservations about mixing rock with Shakespeare, even though their background is very much the traditional theatre, particularly Michael Elliott. And one of the revelations to me has been the way in which the numbers in the show, all of which are modern pop, blues, rock, whatever it may be, they vary, ballad, are able to communicate the mood of a scene in a very powerful and crunchy way, just as one would wish to do it with the text, but would find difficulty in doing so. To be able, for instance, at the end of the scene when Cassio is cashiered by Othello because he's got drunk, to have somebody like Proby to sing the number which follows there and to give the punch to the kind of anguish which he feels about what's happened to him. It is a very exciting way of doing exactly what Shakespeare did in another way. With every cup, when we begin it, a hazard hidden, buried in it, though we may not know its name, it's a devil just the same. Yes, it's a devil in disguise. It transforms me into swine. You stumble, you stagger. about uh, not only individuals but massive conflicts between colors and the crowd is such an important feature of today's world unfortunately the way that the individual can submerge himself and become something less than human okay let's stop there immediately <coughs> this went wrong last time we ran it as well now listen 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 one thing at a time now that moment after the slip when it goes into the slow motion it was an extremely important moment because at that time you stop being social animals, just a crowd out, caught up in a fight, and you become the demonic side, you become the Iago people, okay? And the lid is taken off your minds, and what is revealed is the bloodlust underneath it. And so there should be none of that, no horror, no what's going on, this is terrible. But the moment the blood comes, the face suddenly says, ah. And that's why the girls go in and try and get at the blood. You want to see Othello killed, you want to see Iago killed, you want to see Amelia killed, you want to see Desdemona killed. As long as it's blood, whoever's blood it is, that's the pleasure. It's diabolical. 
Yes. Yes. Wouldn't there be a moment of horror before we went into that? No, there wouldn't, because all that happens at that moment is that we go from your conscious mind to your unconscious, to, to, yeah. to the thing that's underneath. I mean, it's as if you're looking at a Gestapo executioner who's being very, very charming. If you looked inside him, what you'd see was that. Let's go back and try it again, all right? The chorus, the crowd, are drawn into the plot Iago is weaving. Iago wants revenge, blood. He's been passed over by Othello, who's made Cassio his right-hand man. Iago has engineered this fight in order to discredit his rival and replace him. Enjoy it! When knives are drawn, the mood of the mob changes to bloodlust, and Iago moves in to the centre of the stage to take possession of the crowd. The production uses slow motion to give a sense of the hypnotic power of evil with which he binds the crowd to him, making them Iago's people, baptising them with the blood of Cassio's knife. reaction was to pick up a guitar, change phone numbers, and leave town so Jack could never find me so I wouldn't have to say to him, Jack, I can't read this stuff. But that was the first one. After reading it three or four times, I found that it's so well written, it's very hard to say it wrong.